All right, everybody, welcome to Conspiracy Bingo. I guess we'll, we'll get right to it. We have a special guest. You guys asked for it, and it took a little bit of planning, but we got it going on. What's up, Gary? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't have sound from you. Can you check your uh, settings? <laughs> this is live, everybody. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Hell yeah. Right. Good job. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, excellent. Okay. It just by default went to the other setting. Okay. Yeah, it, it'll it'll default to whatever it's calling a uh, default. So um people were have been asking about you since the first time I talked to you. They're like, how's Gary doing? Because like I don't know if you know, like we talk <laughs> sometimes to like people with beliefs that are like outside of the norm. And most of the time, those people are horrible people. And you, everybody was like, that was just such a nice fucking guy. Like, hey, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I'm just a normal guy, really, except for some fringe things you know, in my life. So, Well, great. Uh, before we get started, and I have a couple questions that people asked beforehand, and uh, people are uh, encouraged to join the voice uh, channel in Discord if they want to ask some questions. But just kind of an overview of uh, w like what you're uh, notable for, I suppose, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, I, I uh, other than this, what I'm going to describe is really bizarre. Um, and those who haven't watched anything from you know any of my channels or anything like that or other interviews, um, 2017 in December, uh, I was at work and it was right before christmas the students had gone home we work at a university and i was I usually would take my lunch to the library just out of habit to get away from the students so i'd have a little time to myself uh, and i was getting ready to read charles dickens a christmas carol which actually is a rather short story most people they see the tv version and think oh it's about two hours worth you know um uh, it, it really is um, not much of a read, but it was some. I was in the holiday spirit, and I thought, well, let me uh, let me read uh, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. And no one was in the library. I was at the top floor of the library, and this strange noise when I sat down to read it. This crystalline coated sounding noise in only my right ear. It's not like ear ringing that you would think. It's something really high pitched. Um, it got like a, a code to it. Well, an idea, because this noise was like annoying, I was like, what is that? An idea came to me because um, I have an old track phone, because my wife, she was like, hey, well, because I'm not tech savvy, I don't have smartphones. She just wanted me to have, a, you know, a phone so she could connect with me anywhere, you know, walking across campus or wherever. So I had this $5 track phone. And uh, so I, a thought came to me when I was hearing this noise, I wonder if I could use the digital voice recorder on this to record this noise and try to figure out what's this strange noise. And so I did. But upon playback, I didn't hear the noise. I actually heard a voice, a whisper that said my name. So I was like, I was taken aback. I was, I was thinking, well, somebody's got to be playing a joke. I'm, I don't understand it. I was looking around. Is there somebody here? Uh, it's some crazy stuff. So what happened? I returned, I, you know, I left perplexed and I returned before break commenced. And I thought, would lightning strike again? Um, and it did. So I started to have this regular ear ringing experience. And I say it's crystalline encoded, it's different. Um, where I, if I use my voice recorder, I'm able to translate this ear ringing noise into what sounds like intelligible speech and it, these are whispers and and so i started to have these interactions and of course i went to the family doctor and everything because i thought you know that first sign of dementia so that sounds crazy the thing is i was able to objectively share these clips with other people my doctor included my family doctor we went and we did the mri high uh, detailed mri and we did you know the blood work because there was a theory oh you know i'm in an area where they have lyme disease is rampant in pennsylvania and advanced stage lyme disease could actually cause forms of dementia so um they were they, they broad spectrum blood work everything you know 
see a psychiatrist, everything, just to figure out what's going on. Everything came back clean. Um, so, and again, these clips were, I was able to share them with people. So, and, and, and just actually share me making it, like, I've been the experience interacting with whatever they, these beings, they say they're alien, okay? I have clips where they tell me what they are. I, long story short, so I struck up a rapport, and it's lasted since 2017 in December. And this is, this is uh, expanded to where I, they know details about, the, you know, uh, my family and pets that we've had. Uh, they know details that I don't know. I've, I've done remote viewing for other researchers. I started to share this experience, and the data with other researchers all across the country. I could send them clips, um, people doing remote viewing, like in Oregon or, you know, in Washington. Um, and the thing is, recently, well, let's jump to what, you know, people, people like the fireworks. I've been able to use these EVP clips you now twice to win substantial jackpots with the Pennsylvania lottery. Wait, twice now? The number yeah, this is as, as recently as February 23rd. Um, I knew that day what the number was going to be. I actually took time stamped evidence preparing for the drawing that night. Uh, the odds of me randomly picking the number just randomly is one in 10,000 because it's pick four and I play it straight. So on February 23rd was the second time I won. And this time it was 27,500 bucks, right? Um, so what, it, it, but I knew all day long and I, I, I said, this number is coming up. This EVP tells me to play it. I'm playing it. Boom. I'm sitting there with my wife and stuff. I'm like, I won. And there it is. So I'm getting real world results from something absolutely crazy. Uh, and, and I, I'm the first to admit this sounds absolutely bizarre. You know, this is something that is independently verifiable in the sense that uh, win the lottery without it being public record. Okay, that's one of the things that they have to make sure everything's transparent and stuff. So I've shared my tickets with my family and stuff. Like, hey, because you know, each ticket was worth fifty cents. I mean, each ticket is worth twenty five hundred, but it costs fifty cents to play straight. Again, the odds, the raw odds, are one in ten thousand of me randomly guessing. But knowing that day previously to my win that I was going to win, and most people say, "Why didn't you play more money?" To me, it was the, the idea was, "Oh, this is chump change anyway." The idea is that I'm not in this for profit. I don't ask people to donate. I don't sell anything. I'm telling people something absolutely outlandish. That number one, what I'm interacting with says they're alien. Number two, they seem to know the future, and they, including that Biden was going to win the election. I knew I got the clip in uh, November 2019, and I asked them who was going to win the following year. All right, I have the clip where they say Biden. This is crazy stuff. And the thing is, I mean, I, when I talked to the Pennsylvania lottery, I said, is there a problem with me winning this way? And they said, no, no, no. Because I, I, said, I said, if I have an advantage, some people would say that's unfair. Um, they said there's no rules or no law against it. And I've had other researchers <laughs> say, keep quiet about this. This is going to get you into trouble is what I've heard. Um, and because I'm able to take, this is going to sound absolutely, everything sounds bizarre, but you know, it's the truth. I take a polygraph test, whatever. I, 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 it's so out there. Um, I'm able to take a static EVP clip that I recorded in the past of saying over a year and a half ago. I'm able to play that through my Google Voice Translate. It becomes a dynamic clip where then I can have new interactions through the EVP that's on the clip. Is like opening some kind of, I'm going to call it a portal. I, I don't, I don't, whatever it is, it gains me the ability to have interactions from a static clip. It somehow, uh, I'm looking for the right words, everything's about words. It is able to resonate the frequency, whatever is it. There's, there's a whole bunch of entangled, strange sounds with this EVP. This EVP was made with my wife and kids. We were out back playing. Uh, like we were like showing some paparazzi love 
too. Uh, I am a, a big pigeon aficionado. So I, I have imported tropical pigeons from all over the world. These are rainbow pigeons. I mean, you can look them up. They're, uh, they're, they're rainbow pigeons. They, they're colorful. They're tie-dye colored, all natural. So when I was videotaping this, you know, palm playback, here is the number being told to me to play. And then you have two voices. You have a voice which sounds, sounds childlike telling me the number. And then afterwards, you have a synthetic other voice, almost like they're having a conversation about me. I've had my clips analyzed by audio, profens- audio forensic professionals. And one, one of the clips is a, so, it's a super clear clip. And all this is on my website. So you can listen to this stuff on my YouTube channel. It's all free. Again, I'm not charging a penny. I just want to share this outrageous story with people. A lot of people are materialistic and they don't think anything except what they can see. There's a whole invisible spectrum. We only see a narrow band of the spectrum. We only interact with a narrow band through our senses. But I am confident now there is around us all kinds of other realities, so to speak, that we're unaware of. And for whatever reason, uh, these beings who say they're alien, now again, uh, they, do you believe them? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm taking them, okay, well, they give me the right winning number, but they're also mischievous. They like to play games. So, like I said, in 2019, and it was November, and like I said, I can send you these clips. Everything's independently verifiable. I can substantiate every outrageous claim I'm making. They said that Joe Biden was going to win. Now, in September 2020, they changed their tune. They said Donald Trump was going to win. Now, you t- now again, is this a game? I, all I've argued about all along, which I can stand on, absolutely. The foundation that I stand on is these anomalies that I'm interacting with. It's not about their accuracy. Everybody wants to oh, win the lottery, win Powerball. I have, I have you know, prestigious scientists who want to approach me about going because I have a clip that tells me to go play Powerball. Now, this scientist, you know, I'm not going to say his name, um, he wanted, in a sense, to take some of the credit. And I said, wait a minute, if I'm going to win Powerball, I'm going to be the one that discloses it. I'm going to fully embrace, you know, the rock star lifestyle of, of you know, of disclosure. Um, but there are, there's, it's very competitive. People who want to be in a certain clique in ufology and stuff, if, if you're in the right clique, and I have, believe me, my paranormal portfolio with these people is pretty vast now. I'm interacting with you know, scientists and people, and it's pro bono. They help me, and I, I help them as they have me do um, things, ask questions of these entities. And I've had different, um, like I said, brain scans and stuff for them, um, so they can look. Uh, and and it's 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 absolutely absurd. But the real world results that I'm getting, and, and I'm going back to the pigeons because, like I said, I'm, I'm a pigeon freak. Um, I have a clip, and it's on my YouTube channel, and. And I was, I had extra homing pigeons. These weren't exotics like the other pigeons I'm talking about are exotics um, that are imported. These were just pure white homing pigeons. You know, they're worth 50 bucks. Uh, but I had an extra pair. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to ask the ethereal when the next time they want to contact me, when they give me that ear ringing, I'm going to ask them what I should do with this extra pair of pigeons, right? So this is the weird thing about the beings. If I ask a question when the earring is happening, you nine times out of 10 will hear the direct response. The answer to my question on playback is heard before I ask the question. So at the beginning of the clip, I'm asking about what to do with these white homing pigeons. You have a loud, emphatic class A EVP say, Solomon, it's, it's, it's like it's like my favorite clip, not just because it's about pigeons, but I have clips about the moose, like I said, crazy stuff. Um, and, and it's just, it's, 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 it's so absurd. I don't even know where to go with it, except to say, hey, there's some real world results here. I'm able to, you know, repeatedly, not once, repeatedly win uh, jackpots that are, you know, now people would say, well, play bigger, or, you know, we'll create a website where you, you, know, you give people the tip. I'm, again, I, I think right now I'm in that zone. Like, remember when Napster came out in the 90s? 
and there were no rules against it. And share, I mean, I was part of that scene at sharing uh, MP3s and stuff. Uh, and getting a vast collection of my favorite artists. I always thought that was, you know, something some artists frowned on that. Um, and I was in a band at the time, so I'd like to share music like that. But I think if I become too high profile with a technique that shows that, you know, I'm beating the statistical odds uh, and winning lotteries too much, yeah, they'll make laws against it. Just like a person who's a card counter going into a casino. And then they'll say, nope, you can't play here anymore. So I'm not stupid, um, but yeah, it's crazy. But again, everything I've said right now, you can hear and you can go to check out my website and everything. And I'm sure you'll put the links up. Yep. For your um, as absurd, as ludicrous, as, as, as outrageous, outlandish as it is, it's true. I don't understand it. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I shake my head thinking, this is my life. I mean, I'm just like, this is, this is pretty crazy. Um, but it's the new norm in my family, my extended family. We've come to accept that there are beings or aliens, whatever, uh, spirits, ghosts, you know, people. Uh, we accept that they seem to take an interest in what we're doing. Um, I don't most of the time, uh, by in the middle of the night, if the Iranian happens, and it does happen a lot, I, I do not answer the call. I don't, I just like, I'm annoyed. I won't get my sleep. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm selfish about that. So I only give a small percentage of my life to this. I'm just sharing this with people. Again, everything's free. I can't emphasize enough. If I'm able to win the lottery with this stuff, I don't really need your money. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and believe me, if I can take this to the next level and show, demonstrate to, you know, scientifically demonstrate in a controlled environment that I'm interacting with something that is scientifically as far as our understanding impossible to do well there's my winning lottery ticket you know i'll have the history books uh, talk about that so but there's a lot of skepticism and it's right believe me you know, 10 years ago i would have looked and heard if i heard myself on, on the podcast or something i said that's ridiculous but once you start looking at the evidence once you start looking at the data and say well you know everybody can interpret data in in whatever way but the data itself, that's what we focus on. Why is this happening? Why is it that I'm able to take, you know, a Faraday cage? You know what that is? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, smaller version, a military version, a Faraday pouch. We've done tests where we put the the track phone, and it's not, It's a, it, it, I use the um, Alcatel A205G model only because it's cheap. And, um, you know, it still has a little bit of white noise in it. And that's what researchers, again, I'm not a tech a scientist or anything. Researchers say that's how these beings are able to craft what residual white noise is in the old school track phones, the old school cell phones, um, where the modern smartphones, those algorithms cancel out all the white noise and you don't get it. Um, some people say, oh, no, it's you. You're actually a medium. And, and, and I, I make jokes about that. No, I'm a lord. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I have to set the humor about this because, um, you know, a normal person, this kind of thing in their life, it's it, it just, it, it, it's a big roadblock. I'm just like, you know, um, people start looking at you. Well, one of two things, you're either crazy or you're demonic or, you know, I'm saying religious people, then those people look at you and you know, you're possessed. And I'm like, no, you know, uh, I even have clips where the, the well, I mean, if anything's possessed, it's the phone, not you, right? Yeah. That's the, that's the way I look at it. I even have uh, clips where the beings talk about Jesus. Um, like, who's that? They, 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 and, and it's weird. It's, it's so, but, you know, I, the truth is something that a lot of people, it, it, they find hard to embrace, even if it's free. You know, some of the, the biggest people that I've had the problem with sharing with is uh, people in mainstream media and stuff. They like, we can't tell people things like that. You know, that, that will cause them to be upset. And I'm like, you know, maybe they need to have their balls busted. You know, maybe people need the paradigm that they're, they're a little dingy capsized. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm privy to anything more. I'm nobody special. I mean, this isn't about me. Again and again, I've tried to compartmentalize this the way I stay sane and say, okay, um, number one, I offer this for free because 
people need to know. It's like a public service announcement. And then uh, I'm just, I'm just, again, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss. Now, I sometimes you ask a question of the beings, and they, they, they make a joke out of it. They won't respond directly to the, like, like you know, uh, you know, when we were uh, having a situation with Iran, right? I had some people ask me. People in the intelligence community ask me to ask certain questions because I have a track record of success. And this was in reference to what the Iranians would do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not telling you anything um, confidential, but there are things that, you know, it, it just mystifies. If, if, if number one, time as we understand it is an illusion, which that's what these beings say, that our understanding of time is not linear. We experience time what we call time in a linear fashion because that's how we perceive the world but that's not true these beings can see everything all at once so they see my birth and my death and everything in between simultaneously and it seems to be what maybe other people in you know the old the ancient days called angels or demons you know positive and good um that that's today the word alien is you know it's almost synonymous that's how we approach things um it, whatever they are and like i said they have a warped sense of humor right some of them don't like our species and what we've done to the planet and all these things um some of them you know i ask why they interact with me and they say this is their sense of humor we're sorry you're our favorite so Again, I think that's manipulative, and I call it for what it is. But at the same time, there's a, a component of they're sorry about that. That, that doesn't sound good. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that their sense of humor is, is twisted um, and at times can be cruel. And some people would say that's cruel. Um, but they also, there's an element of frivolity. And something as simple as I, I had this one... I'm going to make myself vulnerable because I think that's the way to keep it real. So I was in the library, and believe me, it's way beyond the library. It started in the library. I'm no longer tethered to the library. I can do this anywhere. Um, when they want to interact, they'll let me know. They don't want to interact all the time, but a lot of times they want to interact when I don't want to. Anyhow, so I had this, this chili and this, this, this lunch in the library, and it calls me to be gassy. All right. So, um, so I passed some gas, uh, and upon the, the, the interaction, um, the entity said, in a very twisted way, he let a stinker. It's so, it's like, really? So you're monitoring even that something is, is ridiculous and the, the minutiae in one's life and the, the, the absurdities of it all. But it, it's, again, you have to, I think, a sense of humor i think that could be a bridge that we could use to build a better relationship or maybe a better understanding with what they are cool so, so gary cool. Uh, <clears throat> i think people can go back uh to the last interview uh that, that we had and they could uh, catch a lot of this and they could also catch all of my questions what i wanted to do this yes. time is uh, ask some of the questions from my community i had some people who aren't going to be able to be here tonight and wanted me to uh, read uh their questions uh to you on their behalf so Certainly. Um, this one is from, this is long series of questions, but I think some of it's already been answered. So I'm going to go through this and try to ask these questions um, and uh, uh, just ignore the ones you've already uh, answered. This is from Avalon of Babylon, who's a regular in my chat and also helps me out with, uh, we have our own wiki and I think you might have your own page on there. I'll send you a link to that later. So yes. do these um, <clears throat> entities have a, like, have you noticed any sort of pattern in what times uh, they'd like to talk to you? Like time of day? Uh, no, there seems to be. Now, uh, when I was taking my lunch in the library, that seemed to be a good time. that um, they, they would interact. It became predictable. And therefore, I could have researchers and stuff who said, well, okay, we know you're taking your lunch break during this half hour. So we want you to ask this question during this is something I can't even know an impossible thing. I can't Google it. You have five minutes from this point. They're going to interact with me. You send us the answer. Don't interpret. And that's what I would do. Um, but 
it's more random now. I mean, it can be anywhere, anytime. Uh, we can be walking through the mall in a noisy setting. I can still hear them. But I can't remember this. I don't hear voices. I hear a noise. I hear a right. noise that sounds still encoded, and I have to translate it through the device. Okay, great. And is there a, a name? Like, if you talk to them, do they have like a, even if it's not a name, is there like a descriptor or whatever that they've uh, suggested that they like to be called? Like, maybe their name isn't Fred, but, you know. Oh, I think, well, they have one that calls herself, and I, I put a female gender, because, again, I don't believe, I believe this is all artifice. I believe this is, you know, they, they, they sound like a frog if they want to talk about a frog or a pig or a rabbit. Uh, it's, it's comical. Um, one called herself Bubbles. Bubbles. That, that's really uh, cute. That's yeah, and, and so, yeah, so it was, I was, I have the clip and it's just weird and it's like, okay, it, but everything is in good fun. So, uh, yeah. Okay, great. Um, do they have any, is, have you ever referred to them in any way that seemed to be off-putting to them or that they didn't like? No, they have offended me and I have, uh, this is going to sound absurd too. They, they've said things to, they said something racist once. Oh, yikes. Right? And now, okay, so, and another time something vulgar. I've shut that down, said, well, I'm not going to interact with you. And, and you're going to, there's going to be a break here. So after that, I'm talking about eight recordings in a row. You have apologies saying, we're sorry, I'm sorry. It's, it's crazy to think that something I can't even see or touch or understand would apologize to me who is a nobody. It's, it's weird. Um, and so, yeah, I, I have, yeah, I, I've had a, a many times where they've been offensive and I think they're pushing buttons on purpose. Maybe. I think the whole thing is a game to them. I think that they're figuring out maybe the, the boundaries that I have. And I have a kind of, you know, twisted sense of humor too. So I can, I can absorb a lot, but sometimes if it seems cruel, I, I don't want any part of that. And um, you had mentioned one of these entities calls themselves bubbles. Are there <clears throat> entities or um, I don't even know if individuals is the right word, but are there some who maybe show up more than others whose personalities yes. you recognize that are more regu regularly show up than others? Absolutely. Um, one is a voice that, well, it's like a little boy, a child's voice who calls me daddy. Uh, it's strange. And, 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 it all, oftentimes, it just is at the beginning of the clip, and it's like, Daddy. And I'm like, so I, I, it's, a, it's a recurrent voice. Another one, um, I would say, is this voice that tries to be macho, that tries, like, I have a clip, and it's, the voice is talking about hell, and it's sounding satanic. And then I say, because I, I don't understand what it's saying until I play it back. But a thought came into my head, and I ask a question, are you a devil? Now, at the beginning, this thing, is this macho, satanic voice talking about constant hell, right? And then you hear my question, are you a devil? And this is one where afterwards you hear a response as well. You hear this little wispy voice saying, I don't want to talk about it. So again, I, my my gut, my, my, my feeling is it's the same character. Maybe and at one point I thought, okay, maybe these are beings that are in hell, but I think they play on these things. I think that it's too easy to see things through a simple prism or filter that society or religion tries to make you. So I have a clip where there's a, you hear the being say, it's, it's, it's just crazy stuff. Um, science or god hmm. so you have this back and forth where they're almost like a volley science or god so, so they're they're trying to feel me out it's like a question of what I, my loyalty is to and and um like i said i i believe i believe in a higher power and you know i was raised christian and stuff so you can't separate yourself from from i think just that's part of your life. Um, you can intellectually approach things differently um, and spiritually. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not a judge or anything, but I think that 
yeah, there are, there are, um, they try to push my buttons and they, they know so much stuff that again, it, it's so crazy. Um, yeah, I'm just amazed. <laughs> so <clears throat> you say that you're confident that they're aliens or that they're referring to themselves as aliens. Um, <clears throat> this is a question from the audience. I don't know that I've seen you use this nomenclature, but, uh, the Avalon of Babylon probably did a good bit of digging. If they're aliens and not ghosts or like uh, uh, spirits of dead uh, people, why have, why have you used the nomenclature uh, a seance in some of your um, work and uh, maybe promotion? Yeah, that actually that was for the fun of it. I mean, I, I'm I'm maybe um I'm, I'm not an artist or anything, but when I came up with subterranean seance, I wanted to tap into I guess the the notion, the preconception of seances being something involving the dead. I have asked these beings, they are not dead people. Let's start right with they now again if we trust them, like, if they give me winning lottery numbers, well then there's some they're trying to on one hand provide valid information in advance. Uh, they they are not um, people who've passed. They seem to be, or at least some of them, seem to be gatekeepers. Now, I sent you a sample today of one of the clips that I recorded in 2019. And I was asking about if they eat in their realm. And the question, that was my question. Before, I'm going to pump playback, you hear them, the, the entity say, they don't do that. Now, it's interesting. Again, I'm, my background in literature and in English and writing and etymology and, you know, work. So, they're saying the plural. This being is saying they, but it sounds like he's objectifying or it's objectifying, talking about others that don't eat like we do. Right. So I are are they? I, I've asked, and they seem to have something to do with the dead. I will say that, but they're not people who've passed on. They may be people, and they, they may. I say they're people, and not they're not people. Whatever they are, they they seem to. They seem to have an interaction with that realm as well. Right. Um, so um, <clears throat> I've got kind of a lot to get through here, and I kind of want to. I kind of want to sure. keep it moving. Um, yes. <clears throat> I know that you said you use a particular phone, but do you know if there are like other kinds of devices or other sorts of like technical specifications one might uh, try to f try to uh, get in a device? Like, let's say they don't have access to this particular phone. Is there are there other kinds of devices that? that you know yeah. of that that would that would be useful in trying to um get sure. these responses I mean, it, yeah you can go on ebay i'm gonna say uh, and for five dollars you can buy one of these old school phones so i'm mean, saying all the older and i'm talking about i'd say pre-2007 phones the digital voice recorders still use white noise a little bit of white noise it's the most modern the smartphones have the complete canceling canceling out of white noise so their algorithms are much better so yeah older models i use a track phone this, this model is and i have lots of these so it's not one phone that's like strangely possessed um all, all these phones of this make and model um are great for recording my evps okay great uh, <clears throat> so i think i already asked this about the time of day you said that it's it's random and that you get to choose the time of day because like you said it's two in the morning go away right like yeah. or maybe not tonight you might be up a little after two tonight but but um yeah. so throughout throughout history there have been groups who believe in days like days of the year like halloween or the winter solstice where the veil between the world's plans of existence are at their thinnest do you know if there's uh maybe calendar days or like do they hit you up on the holidays maybe or are they big fans of halloween or i've actually yeah i've asked those questions um i ask the comment I, common things you know do you like christmas carols do you do you celebrate hollow do you like halloween they don't seem to fixate on any of that um uh, they don't have seasons where they are uh there doesn't seem to be an age distinction uh they like i said they don't at least a group of them they don't eat like we do um and so they just seem to be entertained for the most part by our species huh. they see they well, seem I mean, to be watching us all the we time are, we are silly humans so 
Yeah. Then the last question from Avalon and Babylon is, do you know, and I, I don't, I'm not familiar with this, but like other sorts of people who say they communicate with spirits or ghosts or aliens have mentioned uh, ley lines. Do you know if they, if there's anything having to do with like the ley lines of the earth as far as yeah. this? I've asked those questions as well. There doesn't seem to be any, uh, anything significant about that to them at least. Now I've, I've asked if they have a spaceship, a, a flying machine. Because, you know, I was like, well, are you our traditional concept of aliens from a different world or something? You know, um, they say there are eight of them, whatever that means. They say eight of us. Huh. So whether it's eight machine, they don't go into detail. And, and a lot of times this is the strange thing about EVPs. And this is the limitation of EVPs that they're very limited in a few words, a phrase, a sentence, um, and, and I have researchers who believe, and again, I, I don't have the expertise or the background, I just listen to what they say and say, well, maybe that's true, that they're only able to send these very small packets of white noise that's been crafted into what is the equivalent of speech, a few words, so they, to, to, to get to the point about this, the direct answers to my questions, those are always the most interesting. Um, sometimes it just seems to be like one of the beings is saying, help me. And it sounds like an old person. So I don't know what I mean. And, and sometimes like, like one time I said, why are you bothering me? And upon playback at the beginning of the clip, very distinct, very clear. It's in my documentary. All those things are free. You can watch them online, the, uh, the entity says they will all be dead. Okay, well, I, I, we're all mortal, so I mean, they're not like telling me something new that you know, we're all going to die. But I'm not sure exactly, again, who they're referring to. Are they referring to human beings? Are they referring to another? And, and I say species, because and and just, again, we have a way we approach something that, to me, if we don't understand it, and it is the expression, any uh, technologic, any group that's technologically advanced, if they put something in the past, it will seem like magic. Like if we took a cell phone back 500 years, it would seem magical to see, you know, videos and things like that to the people. But you wouldn't back get any then. service though, so you couldn't make a phone we call. With it. They'd be like, "What do you?" They'd be like, "What is a phone?" But also, your phone doesn't work. Right, right. <laughs> so, so I have another question from Hack All the Things from my chat who can't be here tonight. Uh, actually playing like a probably some kind of spooky card game with his friends tonight. Okay. Um, and this is, I think, this is a this this is a technologically uh, this is a tech person, and I think this comment this question is kind of a joke, but I I think it's a little bit funny. So I'm just going to read the whole thing and uh, see what your take on it is. Uh, he's nice. He's like, hello, Gary. Would you please ask the spirits if they have any plans on physically materializing on our plane of existence through AI with the required old text still found in old track phones being phased out. They will need a new medium in order to be contacted. AI chatbots seem like a good use for them, giving it would have worldwide reach to humanity. All it would take is figuring out how they can transmit their thoughts into data that would be spread via the internet, which they may be able to do with Wi-Fi radio frequencies. So again, any plans on using AI once the radios are no longer, once the, I think they mean it's phones, once the phones are no longer in production or you can't find them. And have any of them attempted to use AI or the internet? And uh, he, he's also offering these uh, aliens or spirits um, use of his uh, personal internet and uh, uh, compute infrastructure if they need it. And he said, thank you. I like that. I, I've not asked the, uh, the alien entities about AI um, or the internet. I, something like this, I, here, I've asked, I asked one time, are you happy um, that I'm getting the word out and telling people and creating documentaries? And before I ask the question, you get to hear one voice say, we're down with it. Down with it. It sounds so 70s. I'm like, okay. But sometimes they date themselves. How they, the expression, is, it doesn't sound contemporary. It sounds like 70s or you know 60s kind of jargon so um yeah that's a good good thing with ai i I would certainly like to bring that up i haven't even thought about it you know there's so much out here tech wise that 
I'm sure. I mean, if they can use an old school track phone, that's pretty pathetic compared to today's um, technology. Yeah, then I'm sure if, if the goal is, and this is where I, I don't want to overstep. I'm not sure how much they want disclosed about themselves. I think even their existence, it seems to be very tepid, lukewarm. I, I try again and again. And, and, you know, I said, here's an example. I said, all right, if you want people to believe and they really believe that something magical is going on, people need fireworks. You know, they need big lotteries being won. Sure. What I've won is great. I said, but when the lottery was over a billion dollars, I said, that's the kind of thing. Give me the number. Numbers for that. And I will guarantee the whole world will take notice. That's, it doesn't seem to be the kind of plan they like. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say. Um, I, I can see an easier route to getting people to embrace a new paradigm. Um, and the Internet and all this technology, well, right now what we're doing is at least, you know, a few steps, baby steps through podcasting and stuff like that. So. Great. Um, and it's one from Kikyo. Uh, do you enjoy spending time at graveyards? No, although I did work in a cemetery in the mid nineties, I was a grave digger. You know, interesting aside, Rod Stewart used to the singer. He was a grave digger too, back in his youth. Um, and I never felt haunted, never felt weird, never felt watched. Um, I, it was sad when, especially young people, children died. Um, it, it, but it gave me a new appreciation of life that, you know, here's this circle of life and you get to see the, the end for a lot of people that finality when, you know, the grass and the flowers grow over and then people don't even come visit. Um, what's led, I'm not saying they should or shouldn't because to me, what's buried in the ground is eggshells, you know, the soul or whatever is hatched and moved on to something else. Um, but, but yeah, um, I don't spend time in the graveyard now. Okay. That was just a, f a fun question. I'm just catching them from my chat yeah. here. I'm not sure we're going to get any voice questions from discord. I feel like maybe that's because the viewers, if they were interested in talking, uh, they would have their own channel. I think that might be right. one of the reasons. So <clears throat> Shelly from my chat asks, have you tried to communicate with them in any other way? Like using, they have uh, apps for modern smartphones that they call spirit box apps where it's, I, I mean, I, I've seen other people use them and I think the app just gives you spooky sounds, right? But have you tried, maybe yeah, no, maybe, maybe not fine. worry about the Spirit Box app so much, but have you tried to communicate in other ways? I, I have um, not I used the Spirit Box. A lot of the apps and stuff, I think they're, they, like you said, I think they're gimmicky. Um, I think that they rely on just making noises that are so, anybody can interpret it. So it becomes totally subjective. That's the difference. I've had my clips, many of my clips analyzed objectively through AI, bleeding, bleeding edge software with these audio forensic people. I have the reports. It's all free for everybody in my documentaries. You can look at it. And, and from several people, I mean, people who are uh, scientists, people who are, like I said, audio forensic specialists, professionals, people who are credentialed, um, it's just uh, oodles of data, but uh, some people get bored by data. They just want to see winning lotteries. <laughs> I, mean, I can understand. Somebody in chat did ask if you could get them the Powerball numbers. So. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I, I, I have the clip that tells me, go to the lottery, Powerball. And I didn't ask for it. I didn't ask any information. I've had that clip analyzed to take a look and say, well, is something hidden in the clip? Um, the reason I'm saying that, and let me reference that pigeon clip again, uh, where the entity said, sell them. I had that clip comprehensively analyzed by uh, this individual who has bleeding edge software they use for intelligence community for Havana syndrome. Okay? They found within that seven seconds that short clip, there are multiple layers beneath the EVP of other conversations. So when I'm asking the question, saying, should I sell my white pigeons, right? If you hit pump playback, you'll hear the emphatic sell them. Again, this is all online. And then I had a what's called a subliminal all right, reveal, where they peeled away the layers of that one clip. They found conversations 
where whatever these beings are, they, they were asking, is it a Homer? How much do you think he'll get for? This is split second stuff that, well, the reason I mentioned Havana syndrome, one of the prestigious scientists who work at Stanford University, who you can find on my YouTube channel, uh, the CIA came to him, members of the CIA, and they, they, some of the people who were affected by Havana syndrome were also affected, uh, similar effects with exposure to UAPs, that they had their brains scrambled and stuff. Um, so there is something frequency-wise, I don't know how to describe it, he says that you can see that you can see the prestigious scientist on my YouTube channel for free, and it's all out there. Um, but I don't want to name drop because he doesn't name drop me. I mean, so it's, it's a nice thing that we just like mention that the data is there for people. Um, he's been he's been helping as well. So mm -hmm. I like I said a paranormal portfolio of people, and, and it sounds creepy, and, I, and that's, that's, it's just like the fun of you know the paranormal portfolio. Um, the idea is that yeah, I, I interact with people who uh, who have a you know, uh, they're millionaires and, and people in the aerospace industry and people in the intelligence community. They wouldn't give me a time of day if something isn't true about this. And when I start winning lottery numbers, and then I have one of these people who's on television, and he's like, "You need to not talk too much about it. I would keep that to yourself." Um, about how your you know your methods and stuff, and I'm like, I want the people to know that this is real. I don't want to sit here and have everything under you know it's confidential. And number one, I didn't sign a non-disclosure agreement, so I keep myself in the open here. On um, that, hey, let the evidence. One of the things, the name of the one documentary is the evidence speaks. Right, the it speaks for itself. I'm again, I'm, I'm beating the odds you know, statistically when it comes to winning these jackpots. Um, I have clips that no one can fathom how that's possible when it's in a Faraday pouch. Um, how is the electromagnetic signal getting in there and, and interacting with me? Um, I don't know. I, 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 again, I, I don't know. I think that I think we, we limit ourselves when we say things can only operate this way according to science. Ooh, I have a, only I only have a I have a question from the YouTube chat, which is amazing because nobody's ever in my fucking YouTube chat. Um, cool. Somebody asked, and do you do you have any thoughts on her? Have these entities ever told you anything about the um, ancient astronauts uh, theory of, uh, of of alien? No, no, no they they've never mentioned anything about ancient astronauts. No, okay, no. And um, we only have a, we only have a few minutes left here because uh, I like to keep my uh, interviews under an hour because this is not um, one of those bro podcasts where we're going to sit here and talk for three hours. Neither of us are actually famous. I have a couple things. Were you <clears throat> interested in aliens or like uh, UFO phenomena? Like m everybody's a little bit interested in that stuff. But would you say that you were interested in that more than um, normal before this uh, before this started happening? No, not at all. Um, I, I guess I've always had an open mind. I was open to it. Uh, as far as, you know, I think there are, there are areas like deja vu and areas of, of experience, of human experience that um, that make you go, hmm, there, maybe there's something to that. But um, And when it comes to, I look up at the sky and you know, at nighttime and I can see a cosmos that, number one, I didn't create. And it just seems so vast. Um, so I, I don't. I never felt we were alone. Um, I just. I think what I'm dealing with, even though they say they're aliens, and again, do you trust them? Because they, they, they're mischievous. And you know, I've given them um, plenty of times to try to tell. They say they're otherworldly. I have a clip where they say that. Do I think they came from the stars or something? No. I, I think what we. I think they're almost what I would say interdimensional. That they're here right now while we're talking. I believe that in, in the basement and, and they're sitting next to you, we just don't interact with, they don't interact with us most of the time, but when they want to, they seem to bug me with this, this crazy sound in my right ear. And uh, I've, I've recorded it and, uh, and I've been amazed at the responses to questions, including winning lottery numbers and, and, and being able to know in advance and, and to timestamp and to show, hey, Okay, it's it's one in ten thousand. 
a 0.01% chance I would just randomly get this right. So let's talk about the math of not just getting it right once, but knowing in advance that day that I was going to get it right and doing the timestamps and, and, and everything. That that becomes something that is so minuscule. Um, it borders on just as ridiculous as saying they're aliens. It's like, I, have well, another, <laughs> I have another question from the chat, and I don't know. You may not, they may not have said anything. Are they like, do you, do you find that they're broadly aware of human history, things like World War One or World War II? Or? Yes. Yeah, they seem, they seem to, they seem to know everything, okay. which is just frightening. And when I say that, I'm not saying the individuals know everything because with like the pigeon clip that had multiple layers that were peeled away where they're having a conversation. Is it a homing pigeon? How much do you think you'll get? Well, if they knew everything, they wouldn't have to ask those questions. Okay, but this is great. all bubbling under the surface. And I, so, I, have, yeah. I have a couple, a couple more questions. Maybe I don't, I think I didn't ask. <clears throat> Are you interested in other kinds of conspiracy theories? Um, for example, like we talk a lot about people who believe in chemtrails or we no longer talk about people who believe the earth is flat because that's, we've gotten quite bored with it. Are you interested in other kinds of uh, conspiracism or conspiracy theories? Not at all. I mean, I, I think that's really, I, my, my background. I mean, I had earth science. I, mean, I have a degree I mean, from university and as a thinking person, um, there's just no evidence that the, you know, I'm not saying we didn't spray agent orange and stuff like that. That's a different, that's different. story. That's a different, yeah. that's a different hypothesis. No, there's, there's no evidence. Uh, and, and, and that's what it's about. It's the evidence, follow the evidence. If I didn't have this, this mountain, I'm talking about a huge mountain after all these years of evidence of something insane that it, it merits further investigation, I would reject it outright. But because of the evidence, the data, I have to say, well, something's going on here and it, it's, it's a puzzle. And I like trying to solve puzzles. So when you get the when you get the sound, somebody is asking. They ask some questions, but what is the sound like? Somebody asked actually probably a pretty good question. Is it like a constant sound, or is it like a ringing like a bell? No, it's uh, it's crystalline coated. And if you think of a an insect, take a a really high cricket, or maybe have you? I don't know how familiar you are with certain insects, but katydids at nighttime they make a special kind of noise. It's unlike crickets. It's unlike it, but it's 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 a very high crystalline sound. It's different, than, but I say insect in the sense that those frequencies are so high that it sounds like an insect, almost like a you have a mosquito that whines. You have that little yeah, noise yeah. around. It's higher than that. But it's similar in the sense that frequencies are there. Great. So it makes me think of insect. Cool. Cool. Well, this is this has been super fun. I'm glad you came and were willing to answer the questions. Thanks for staying up late with us. And uh, what are you what are you drinking on? I see you drinking a beer. Uh, no, no, no. Perrier grapefruit um, oh. water. <laughs> very, very good, very good. So, yeah. <clears throat> I know your uh, your web URL. It's uh, we are not alone, Gary Arnold. Uh, and I think if you just look up we are not alone, Gary Arnold, I think you'll just find it immediately on YouTube. I think that's yes. what you uh, tell people to do. But all. You know, I put this up to YouTube and on our podcast feed and whatever. I'll make sure there's uh, links you. in there. And um, yeah, this is this has been a lot of fun. Like I said, um, I, I I still I still don't think I believe you, but you're you're like you're you're I I, I enjoy talking to you. You're like you're a lot nicer than the other uh, fringe fringe belief people we talk to. <laughs> well, so. Thank you very much. I mean, I really appreciate um, your time and and your audience. And uh, again, just. It's all free. Please share. Feel free to ask more questions. My contact information is there. I'm open to you know, discuss anything with anyone. There is no, you know, no one gets censored. No one gets ignored. Well, great. Uh, this, once again, this has been Gary Arnold, um, and we'll we'll go ahead and make sure this goes out on the podcast feeds. And maybe it's been about a year since I talked to you. Uh, maybe we'll yeah, check in again in about a year. See see where see where you're at. See what's going on. Hey, I'm counting on the Powerball, so I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Oh, if, if you if you win the Powerball, you should break us off. Yeah, I, I'll I'll come out and visit. <laughs> you're you're picking up you're picking up the check at dinner. You got it. Or maybe you can buy the fucking restaurant. <laughs> all right, all right, Gary. Thanks again. Uh, good night. Thank you so much. Again, thank you.